Amen. Amen. Colossians chapter 1, <clears throat> from verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, and Timotheus, our brother, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ, which are at Colossae, grace be unto you, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love which ye have to all saints. For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof ye heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel, which is come unto you as it is in all the world, and bringeth forth fruits as it doth also in you, since the day ye heard of it and knew the grace of God in truth. As ye also learned of Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is for you a faithful minister of Christ, who also declared unto us your love in the Spirit. For this cause, we also, since the day we heard of it, do not cease to pray for you and desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that ye might walk worthy of the Lord with the Lord, the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthening with all might according to the glorious, according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the, the Father which has made us meet, which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. Here ends God, the reading of God's word. Father, thank you so much for giving us the privilege to hear your word. Once again, as we do, as we hear your word, we pray that give us an opened ear. Give us a circumcised ear. Give us a sanctified ears so we can hear what the Spirit says to the churches in our times. What we are not make us. Where we are not take us. Who we are not make us. All to the glory of God, the Christ alone. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Well, last Sunday, we spoke about Epaphras. Epaphras 3. <coughs> Excuse me. We spoke about Epaphras 3. How Epaphras is an amazing man. Now we want to move on. So when you look at the text very carefully, it starts by talking about how um, Paul, which always, he always does, um, is an apostle and writing to the saints and faithful brethren. It pays to be faithful. In life, it pays to be faithful. Whether in marriage, whether in business, whether in ministry, and whether in career, it pays to be faithful. And God actually rewards faithfulness. It says to the faithful brethren uh, who are in Christ, and it says that we give thanks, we give thanks to God for you. And um, talking about their faith and then their love and their, their hope. And talking about their, um, verse 5 says, the, the hope that is laid up for you in heaven, whereof you heard before in the word of truth, word of the truth of the gospel, which has come to you as it is in all the world and brings forth fruits as it does also in you. Since the, watch this, this is where I'm coming to. The verse um, 6 talks about how the word of God um, has come to them as it's done in all the world and brings forth fruit, which just as it does in you also. When you really have an encounter with God's word, it will, fruits will show. The word of God, today's reading, you remember Isaiah 55. 
He says that, so shall my word be. That goeth forth out of my mouth. Now, that's the verse 11. But the verse 10 talks about how as the rain comes down and the snow comes down and it maketh the earth bring forth and bad. And it gives seed to the sower and food to the eater. It depends on who, who you are. If you are an eater, you get bread. If you are a sower, you get seed. Yeah, the word of God gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Some people in church are only eaters. <laughs> a consumer is always waiting for the next one. A consumer must always depend on the supplier. A consumer is always waiting for the next allocation, next thing the supplier is going to bring. But a distributor doesn't always have to wait. A distributor makes themselves someone who has to give. So if you're a distributor, you must always have in order to give. Bible says that what do you have and you did not receive? So if you're a distributor, you have, but if you're a consumer, you have to wait for it to come, for it to consume. That's the difference between certain nations and other nations. Some nations are always receiving aid. When would they also start giving aid? The more you receive aid, the more you are, you are capped to be an aid receiver. The reason why, oh, I think I should go back to my test, but the reason why some people are not likely to have a good job and progress in life financially is because they are benefit recipients. When you always enjoy receiving benefit, thinking that, yeah, monkey they work, baboon they chop. You, you will never. <laughs> yeah. You look at the communities that are led by benefit gurus. Nothing, they don't really break through. You can't break through being a receiver, constant recipient of, recipient of benefits. The nations that are always receiving benefits, for some reason, they never progress. They never progress. Those who are always going to IMF for loan, for help. They, in fact, when they say, they say we don't do IMF again, eventually they go. You can't be free. It's, it's, a, it's, a law in, it's an interesting principle in life. The people who believe that things must be done, you are part of it. No, this is not our church. But you are part of a church, and you have made up your mind the church must pay your rent, church must pay uh, your water bill, church must pay your... Some people, when they, when they join a church, that's why they join. It's for benefits. Their life never progress. He said, let him who stole steal. No more to work with his hands. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 4, I think verse 28 or so. Yeah. Let him who stole steal. No more, but rather work with his hands. That's how some people read it. But I said, let him who steal steal no more, but rather let him labor. Why? Working with his hands. So, see, if you are not working, it's no good. Anything that looks like a breakthrough in the life of the one who is not working is breakdown uh, roots. It's no breakthrough. If, what is the sense in a person who is agile, who is physically able, who decides not to work? Sister, be intentional. Don't fall in love with a guy who has not worked for a long time. It's a trap, and you know what? The benefit that you get, you get the benefit of wasted years. You will end up with many wasted years. Don't go in a relationship with a guy, if you're a woman. The other way around, no problem. But. I'm looking, I'm looking for a woman who has a good job. I'm looking for a woman. How about you? I can't wait for a single seminar. Don't, 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 don't. 
don't. Especially if he doesn't have a job, but he's driving an expensive car. No. You will never, your, your children will suffer unnecessarily. They will struggle. Some of you are not happy, but I don't care. There are some guys in church, they don't work. They stay. And most of them always believe that they will do ministry. Ministry is not for lazy people. Most people who don't want to work and they end up in ministry always uh, suffer in ministry. Ministry is not a means for living, livelihood. You don't want to work. But the Bible says that let stop stealing. Work with your hands. Labor. Excuse me. Working with his hands, well, working with his hands, the things which a, the thing which is good. Some things is not worth working. Good work. Watch this. Is why I brought you to this scripture. That this scripture that he may have to give. You see why you should work. So you can be a giver, not a bene- dependent on benefits. And I don't think in our community is good. People will like it when you say these things, but I will say it. So, there's no glory in being a dependent so long as. Why, why should your life be sustained when you are healthy? And any man who is over 30 and still living with his mother. Let me not go there. Let me go back to. The pressure is getting worse. <laughs> All right, let's get, to, let's get to the text. So it says that the word of God, verse 6, which is come unto you as is in all the world, and bring forth fruit as it does also in you since the day you heard it. Watch this. Since the day you heard the word of God, it started bringing forth fruit. But that's not, the fruit is not because you heard the word of God. If you don't finish the text, you think it's about just hearing. But you heard the word of God and knew the grace of God in truth. When you, are, when you encounter actual grace, your life will be fruitful. You can't encounter actual grace and be fruitless or, gra- uh, 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 or, or disgraced. See, your life will, when, since you knew the grace of God in truth. Hallelujah. And so it, it, if you notice, he kept talking about them about them. So the verse um, 3, we give God thanks for you. Verse 4, since we heard of your faith. Verse 5, and your hope. Verse 6, um, fruits are in your life because you knew the grace of God. Verse 7, as a result of Epaphras. So these things we are spoken about you is because of Epaphras, which also you learned from Epaphras, our faithful brother, and he spoke a bit about Epaphras. He said, uh, we heard this about you, about you, about you. Epaphras has been a blessing to you, and because of that, you have fruit. And that he says, now, verse 9, he says that for this cause, we also. There is always a responsibility for you and for us, for we. Apostolic responsibility. Apostolic responsibility. Is not to connect you to people who will marry you. It's good if I know someone who has a business and looking for a job or a flat want someone I might call. I said, okay, they told me, okay, maybe check this one. It's good, but that's not a, a primary responsibility of, a, 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 of an apostle. He said, we also, since we had, we see, we have to check. We, we tick, you tick the, the box of faith. You tick the box of love. You tick the box, the box of hope. And grace is actually working in your life. And there are fruits because of Epaphras. We also, everybody say we also. We also, we also since the day we heard of it, do not cease to pray for you. I said it in the previous teaching. That you want to have credibility as a minister 
or as a pastor in the life of people you are not praying for. It's a joke. They may respect you for the office, but there is something that God gives. I like the way Hebrews chapter 5 verse 4 says. He said, no man takes this honor upon himself. People are going around with titles thinking it, it will bring their honor. Titles doesn't come with honor. The actual honor from God, it doesn't come with titles. When we give you a title, we might, we, I can give you a title, but I can't give you the honor. Because no one takes this honor from himself. No one takes it, but except he who is called of God. God gives the honor that goes with the office. Now, for you to be an officer and to be relevant in the lives of people, listen, don't desire to receive respect from people. Desire to add value to people. And you receive respect from people. Did you hear what I said? Desire to add value to people. Be a value-adding personnel in the life of others, especially in the church. There are people who come to churches, join churches, and it's all about them. No one say hello to me. People are not friendly. Especially those who go around, people who say this, never trust anyone who passes comment like, there's no love in the church. There's something wrong with them. There's no love in the church. There's no love. There's no way where the Bible commands that you should be loved. It actually commands you to love. So stop demanding love from people and start giving love. Start giving love. That's the essence of the church. This church life that makes you a, uh, like a recipient, benefit recipient. You see, when your life has been, because we live in a world, a, a world where now fairness is important, human rights and fairness, which is good. But sometimes it can be pushed so much that when you have to take responsibility for your life, you still think people owe you responsibility of helping you. My, my dad never helped me. My dad never, listen, he's dead and gone. What would you do about your life? The government must put in systems to help people like us. What, so if they don't do what will happen? Take, take the responsibility of the progress of your life into your own hands by the help of God. Take responsibility. Sister, your husband is not forceful. Your husband is not forceful. And the Joseph Egypt type of farming is visiting your family. The lean cows have eaten all the fat cows. Your husband is not trying. Every time, say, when I go to the interview, they are discriminating against me. Every time. Sister, don't attack him. It's your husband. That's your portion. Maybe when you look at his father, it can explain why it's the way it is. Because the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. His father was like that, and like that, and never get to anything. And now it's your turn. The mother has finished her own. Now it's your turn. Sister, if you don't get up to do something, some of you, if you don't get up to start looking for another apartment, this is your husband, he doesn't mind who. You stay there, stay in one, one room for 24 years, he'll be there. He, he was able to manage through Libya, through Italy. He, 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 listen, he's fine. Re recently, I visited a family of, a ch of the church that have bought a new house, and I just was around to pass by, and they've done an extensive extension. And so 
the kitchen, they've extended it big and stuff like that. And I said, oh, wow, that's... He said, when they moved in, he showed me where the kitchen was. It was quite small as compared to what they have. What they have is about three times the original. And he said, but when we moved in, we were so happy that because the kitchen was so big. Because of where we were coming from. We saw this tiny kitchen and we said, this is so big a kitchen. Little did they know that it was really very small. Until they visited new found friends in the territory. And they realized that they have been shortchanged. Now, what I'm, tr- I'm saying is that sometimes you might not realize the condition you are living under until you try and look a little bit beyond where you are. So, this one is more advice to sisters. Because some of us, our husbands might not be very, especially in modern day United Kingdom. Some of the guys have been through so much, they have lost the drive to fight. Especially black men. They've been through so much, something has been taken away from them. Especially when you get to a certain age. Don't touch it again. When you get to a certain age. (laughs) When when you get to a certain age, the drive to persevere is gone. So most men before, just before 30 and right after 30, that's not the time to be having, sleeping with different, different women. That's the time to have a vision. Because when you cross 40, 45, before 50, you are tired. That's where sometimes the wives too, Stop desiring big things and eat it. Think ahead. Think ahead. Think ahead. Investment. Some women, when you marry them, they never bring progress into your life. I said, some women. Please don't get angry with your wife yet. Please. <laughs> because I know you'll be getting, ah, that's exactly what this woman. <laughs> so. How did I get here? So rise up, you know, rise up and do some. When you are going out with a guy, you can tell he's not ambitious. He's finished his master's eight years ago. He's still not trying. He has excuse. One reason why this exam is only for some uh, race people. He has excuse. Keep encouraging him by you yourself. Get up and do something without disrespecting him. Get up and do something. Because it takes two to tango. The days where it's only depending on one person, one party, those days are over. And some of, la- some of the ladies are so strong with ideas. You can do something. If you wait for the man, you do that. Look for a property. Tell her, I found it. What do you think? If you say, oh no, where we are is okay. Don't disagree with him. Say, okay, I, I see. But come and see, just, just come and see, you know. And work on it gradually. Other than that, things will change you. And later on, you will not be a happy woman and you frustrate him more because he himself is already frustrated. <laughs> and when it happens like that, they give up in life very early. There are many men who have passed their middle ages and they've given up. But you are living with him, you don't know. He's giving up. He's tired. And now he's, that's when you start comparing with uh, uh, Katie's, Katie's friend. <laughs> Compare this one, this one's children, this one's husband. He's tired. He tried. But he didn't have helpers. And he didn't have good counsel. And he didn't have appropriate exposure. This doesn't look like a good Sunday morning message. <laughs> for this cause, we also, since the day we heard of it, do not cease to pray for you. 
I think some people have lost some people at the moment. As I grow, I'm, I'm beginning to realize that sometimes we don't act early or we are not decisive early enough. And then later on, people, as people grow, the regret grows. The regret grows. And then all they have is, hmm, hmm. hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, so as a pastor, I must, I must also draw your attention to the things that might, maybe you haven't considered. You haven't considered. But later on, it might become a point of frustration. So it's good, yeah. We, we, so we can all grow together, isn't it? I said, so we can all grow together, isn't it? Yeah. Don't be quick to sell a house. Be quick to buy another one. I remember one of the sisters, they were going to sell their house. This is about the one who bought a house without any down payment. Bless. They're going to sell the house in where? Waterloo. I said, oh, that place is too prime. Don't sell it. Don't sell it. Instead of buying bonds and shares, take the money out and buy a house. Leave this one. Don't sell it. And today it has become a big blessing. Sometimes you have to change where you are living because of your children's school. I know you are very comfortable, but you might have to relocate. Because the schools there have too many bad boys. I know your own is godly, but still. Sometimes we just have to help people to just take some steps. That's why we are doing single seminar. Because if we don't do it, you marry the wrong person. You marry the wrong person. Later, you say he's abusive, so you are taking him to court. <laughs> or oh, she's abusive, so she are taking her to court. So since that day we had, do not cease. Am I okay? <laughs> do not cease to pray for you and to desire that he might be filled with the knowledge of his will. Now, look at the prayer topic. I will give you. 12 things he prayed for the church. But I said, we do not cease to pray for you and to desire. We are not just praying, but we are desiring that you might be filled. Not that you might get a good job, you buy a house and all. The desire for you is a different thing. And that is fundamentally Christian. All the other things you can desire for anybody. But there are some things that it's when, that's what distinguishes us or differentiates us as Christians. It's a desire that you might be filled. Can you imagine? You are walking and you are filled with the knowledge of God in all wisdom. What? Filled in the knowledge, filled with the knowledge of God's will. As I spoke about the will of God, the will of God here is not the smaller ones. Who you should marry. Where you should look, relook, uh, settle. Which branch you should be part of. Or for those of you who are watching online, which church you should attend. It's good. But those are baby will, as I explained the other time. The will of God here, if I verse the verse one, he mentioned the will of God there. He said, I'm an apostle. Uh, I'm an apostle, uh, 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 apostle of Christ. By the will of God. But by the will of God, don't let us make it petty. The will of God here is talking about God's eternal arrangement and purpose. Some species are eternitis. Looking at things in the light of eternity. So that's the will of God. Don't judge the will of God based only based on what you eat today. Which should you buy Mercedes or you should buy Punto or should you know those things are also just make, it will make your life okay here. Yeah. But the will when we talk about the will of God, these are weightier matters of eternal value. The will of God, and He says that I'm praying for you that you'll be filled with the knowledge. Of the will of God. Wow! You'll be filled with the knowledge of his will. You know his will. Not his will for me, what I should do now, which is all part of it, but 
His will. So that when you are going through, whatever you are going through, you are so filled with the knowledge of his will that nothing temporal or nothing happening around you, nothing incumbent discourages you. Nothing incumbent derails you. Because you are filled with the will of God. Because in life, things happen we don't understand. Can you imagine when Jesus died on the cross? He was the only one who understood. He was the only one. The disciples were actually scattered. But one thing I like about Jesus is he's such a good pastor that he didn't want his disciples to be touched. He said, I'm the Christ you are looking for. I'm the one. Leave these ones. Let them go. Even at the last stage, he protected them. Don't touch them. Because he knew that if they arrest them too, some of them. Peter, Peter denied him just that the same night. <laughs> so he knew they, they can't. Even though they were making noise, we are there with you. Yeah. He knew they can't. He said, just let them go. When he went to heaven, he went interceding on their behalf. Wow, what, what a great high priest. What a great shepherd of the, of the sheep. So, Jesus Christ was the only one who knew. That's why he joyfully died on the cross. Pastor, do you say he joyfully? Yes, he did. But he was crying on the cross. If any, on the, when he went to pray, he said, if it's possible, let, you, let this thing come back. So that he didn't go joyful. No, what he was afraid of was the sin. Because he was so holy, he has never seen sin. For the first time, sin, definitely he must, he must repel it. He must abhor it. No, no, please, if it's possible, don't let this sin thing come on me. He doesn't know sin. He was sinless. And now they are going to put the sins of the whole world on him. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. The sins of the world, that he definitely of a necessity by virtue of his holy nature, he must abhor it. So that was what he was praying about, if it's possible. Not the cross. The cross was not a problem. But the sin that he was going to bear on the cross, what was he was praying about. So he joyfully embraced the cross. However, people thought it was the end, including his disciples including those who loved him most. The women who were following were dedicated to him. The first day of the week, they were going to the tomb to go and embalm him, to give him a decent rest. Because they knew that it's over. It is over. But he knew that, that was not, it wasn't over. In other words, that what he was going through was temporal because God had a bigger agenda. You remember in Acts chapter 7, 27, when Paul said that the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, chapter, verse 20, 20, 21, 22, 23, stood by me tonight and told me that, Paul, you must, you must, you must be before Caesar. You are going to Rome. The, the angel told Paul, saying, fear not, Paul, for that might be brought before Caesar. So you see, even though it looks like there's no hope of life, he knew in the grand scope of things, the will of God was that Caesar must hear the gospel. Rome must hear the gospel. He was going to Rome to go and spread the gospel in Rome. And so the high seas, even though there was no hope, the Bible says that all hope of being saved was gone. What? He said, we despaired of life. He said, all hope. He says that, and when neither sun nor star in many days appeared, can you imagine? Many days appeared, and no small tempest lay on us. In other words, not only sun and star didn't appear, but the beating, the, the storm, constantly, for many days, hey, beating on that we should be, uh, 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 um, as all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. There's no hope, all of them. And it was after this, that the angel of the Lord is just after this. Watch, look at the next verse. For there stood by me an angel. No, no, no. Verse 21. Verse 21, please. But after a long abstinence, uh, uh, so for, for after long abstinence, Paul stood and told them, where, where is this coming from? Because he has met an angel. The angel came. After all hope of being saved was gone, angel came to him. So I think I'm standing here like an angel telling you, don't let your current situation discourage you. Lift up your eyes. Lift up your eyes. There is a bigger plan of God for your life than what you eat or what you drink. Than what you wear and where you live. Than what you earn and who you, who you will know. There's a bigger agenda of God for your life than who you marry and what child you have. There's a bigger agenda for, of God. Over, even your children are are a function of God's a purpose and agenda in your life. So, I don't have a child yet. I don't, please, don't let it weigh you down. Thank God that he's faithful and in his time, 
He makes all things beautiful. God is faithful. When you go through whatever you are going through, be filled with the knowledge of it. But how will you be able to go through it if you are not filled with the knowledge of his will? So the pastor, the apostle, he said, I'm praying for you that you'll be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. This one sounds a bit uh, unclear. Be filled in the knowledge of it. Quite a long statement. A lot to chew on. That I'm praying that you'll be filled with all wisdom, the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That one, what's the meaning? <laughs> Think about it. What, what's the meaning of this? That's why we are doing this. So we, have, we try and explore what he's trying to say. Because we have to understand what he's trying to say. Definitely he's saying something meaningful. But on first sight, it might not be meaningful to us. Now, he's, don't forget that he's writing to a church that was living in a society of all kinds of ideas and opinions. So to the extent that chapter 2, he told them, verse 8, be, be careful, lest someone spoil you through philosophy. He said, beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After the traditions, tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. This, so, philosophy, vain deceit, traditions of men, rudiments of the world, these are good things. But you, they can distract you from Christ. So he was warning them. And they were living in a, a society that was l- driven by tantalizing philosophy. The, the Gnostics ideology of wisdom. We know, we, you know, we've done research. We've done research and we can, we, we can tell you that, you know, this whole Christ thing, there's a dimension to it that you, you, you wouldn't know. And they, they were being bamboozled and bullied by so-called wisdom. Wisdom. And it's sensual wisdom or earthly wisdom, human wisdom. So there are things that you are taught in universities that are good, they sound amazing, but it's pure human wisdom. There are a lot of, you know, can you imagine sometimes when you, when you listen to uh, Prime Minister's Question Time or all this, sometimes the opposition sounds so right. Other times too, the government sounds so right. It depends on which side you are. And these are, those in the opposition and those in government, they, these, these are great, intelligent people. So if intelligence is common, intelligence is common, why is it that they differ on opinions? If it's the same, because you are intelligent, I'm also intelligent, but why is it that you have a point which differs from the point I also have? That's human wisdom. Because you might have a means to achieve this thing this way. I might also have a means to, mine will be good, yours might be also good, but one might be better. But mine might be good. Later we'll find out which one is the, is the best. See, so human wisdom is not bad in itself, but they were being bullet by supposed wisdom that neutralizes and nullifies Christ. Some of you family members bully you so much that there's no point then. Okay, let me tell you some of the wisdom. When you have, you are tired, your work schedule, Monday you work from 8 to 8. Tuesday you work from 8 to 8. 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Saturday you even have work half day. And there's so much work. Your house is a five-bedroom house. There's a lot of stuff. Sunday is the only time you can do your laundry. You can, do you have to go to church? You can watch online. I mean, you see, you see how it sounds wise? You can watch. And, and they, they, will, they will even add, seal it by saying, God understands. <laughs> They'll tell you God will not be angry. God will not be angry. You don't have to go. In fact, if you go once every two months with the shadow, are you trying to, they'll say, are you trying to say God didn't give you that job? God gave you the job. How do you know? Because you're able to feed your children. You're able to pay your rent. Look at the things you're able to do. You're able to help your mother and your disabled sister. Look at the things you're able to do. You're actually giving to charities. Other charities that are helping Palestine are helping uh, 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 no Afghanistan, the other one. Where Taliban took over? It's Afghanistan, right? Yeah. Uh, Pakistan. 
You are helping Pakistan. You are helping aid to Haiti. You see, you are donating a lot. Do you think this is not more Christian than just going to sit in a church for somebody just to be preaching? You can hear the same preaching and maybe maybe different, better ones online. So the reason with you is, oh yeah, this makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Be careful, no one spoils you with philosophy. So wisdom, earthly wisdom, and they were being bullied with earthly wisdom, natural wisdom, things that are wise and they sound amazing. Look, someone who someone can tell you, like someone told me years ago, he's, I think he's Ghanaian, he lives in UK, and he's living with a, la- a lady. You know, he has a wife and children in Ghana. And he said, this, this is his wisdom. He said, Pastor, ask, ask for a man. I know you know. A man, you always need a woman. It's not anything bad. You know you need a woman next to you. See, so he has rationalized himself into it. And I'm sure he had friends who didn't even see anything wrong with that. Who didn't see anything wrong? To the extent that people can... Can you imagine? Can you imagine? I hear people do this. Um, what is it called? Wife swap or swing? Is it swing? Which one is which? Swinging. So a couple, they go out somewhere and then they swap. Sometimes it can be three. Three different couples, right? But you know, people have, they make sense of it. Recent, not recently, I think they do it every year, but I've seen, I've seen it once, where people who supposedly intelligent people walking on the streets here, um, Hyde, is it Hyde Park? It's a match, naked, all naked. About 1,000 people, naked. Yeah. Oh, how many of you know about it? How many of you have seen it before? You haven't seen it before? I'm not saying we're standing there saying, this is what it's going to be like. <laughs> Pastor, when do they do that? <laughs> the reason why you want to see it is because porn is disturbing you. So... Academics amongst them, high-powered uh, uh, business owners, intelligent people, uh, highly educated people. And why would you do this? There's a rationale behind it. There's a wisdom behind it. So then, sometimes what the world calls wisdom, I'm not saying every wisdom of the world is bad. Some of it might look wise, and if you are not careful and you want to work with God, Purely based on the wisdom of the world, you will miss God. So he's here. He said that, okay, let me show you something. He says that, uh, I'm praying that you'll be filled with the knowledge of God, the knowledge of the will of God in all wisdom. Now, the wisdom he's mentioned here is different from the worldly wisdom. The wisdom of the world is based on the dark mind. The dark mind. So some of it is good, others, others is too extreme. Others, is, uh, some of it is not wise. If you, in certain nations, people in government, the policies they come out with, and the decisions they make in some nations, you are wondering, but I thought these people should be wise. They pass some laws, and that uh, uh, somebody can sleep with his dog. They stop, but they are educated. How? How did we get this far? I know what some guys are thinking that they should change the law here and make it make it acceptable to marry more than one woman. Because you say that, but why, why should I be stopped for being in love? Marry someone I love. Men have the ability to love more than. <laughs> uh, I know some of you. That's your prayer. So, um, in all wisdom. Now, when you look at um, Ephesians chapter 4, it talks about how their understanding is darkened. Being alienated, verse 18, having their understanding darkened. Why? Being alienated from the life of God. So then, when we talk about worldly wisdom, most of it is birthed out of a darkened understanding. Even though it might work one way or the other, it's birthed out of a darkened understanding. But when we talk about godly wisdom, 
Watch this. Listen to Don't miss this. Don't miss this. Godly wisdom is of the Spirit of God from our spirits. So the Spirit of God who, let me use some of these words so that you can be familiar with it, some of these phrases. The Spirit of God who indwells your spirit. So every human being has a spirit. When you become born again, the Holy Spirit indwells you. Where? In your spirit. So then your spirit and the Spirit of God becomes mingled into one entity. Even though you still have your human spirit. So Paul, Romans chapter 8, said, uh, for the Spirit of God, verse 16, bears witness with what? Our spirits. So we have our spirits and the Spirit of God. So every spirit is not the same. When we say the spirit, it might be your spirit or the spirit of God. So the spirit of God bears witness with our spirits. Now, when you are born again, the spirit of God indwells your human spirit. And that is where the wisdom of God starts from. So the wisdom of God is supplied by the spirit of God in your human spirit. And the wisdom of God, what does it, what's the benefit of the wisdom of God? The wisdom of God helps you to understand or appreciate the will of God. It helps you to know what actually God is doing in the grand scope of things. The, the wisdom of God or the spirit of God. So the wisdom of God helps us to have a better understanding of the things of God or what God is doing. And now wisdom is of the spirit. But he didn't only mention wisdom here. Look at the screen again. In Colossians chapter 1, the same text, he said, verse 9, please, we pray that you'll be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and what? Spiritual understanding. Understanding is of your mind. Wisdom is of the spirit. Understanding is of the mind. Wisdom is of the spirit. So your spirit man receives wisdom, and then it, that's why in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 23, it talks about be ye, be ye, be ye renewed in the what? In the spirit of your mind. And so the spirit, wisdom in your spirit now begins to affect your mind. So you are, you are talking about a sanctified mind based on a renewed spirit, based on a regenerated spirit. So the spirit of God, this is only Christians can have, can know the wisdom, will be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Amen. Only Christians. Because we have the spirit of God indwelling us. And the spirit of God gives us the wisdom of God. And when we have received the wisdom of God, it begins to affect the way we understand, affects our mind. So our, the, spirit, the spirit of your mind is renewed. The spirit of your mind. Can you imagine? He said, be ye renewed in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 23 again. Be ye renewed in the spirit of your mind. Be ye so then, it means that you don't judge things just as anybody at all judges. Your judgment has a heavy influence from the spirit of God. Now, how can that happen if you don't get filled with the knowledge of his will? So, it's not based on education. It's not purely based on teaching. That's if it was based on teaching, you would just teach them straight away without praying. But I said, I'm praying for you. Because this thing is just, it's so spiritual, it starts from the place of prayer. And at one of the prayers we should pray, that God, fill me with the knowledge of your will. It's a good prayer to pray. Fill me with the knowledge of your will in all wisdom. And spiritual understanding. So people don't just come talking to you and say anything. Say, ah, okay, okay, I get it. Okay. You have so much spiritual wisdom that sometimes, I don't know how many of you have experienced this before, where sometimes someone throws you a religious question. That sounds very wise, and you don't even have answer to it. But in your spirit, you know it's still wrong. Many years ago, I heard about a young, an old lady old lady who is not very well educated but she's born again and she's been preaching about Christ and she met this person other man or woman met this man and was talking to the man about Christ and the man was very 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 highly educated and he's read all kinds of things so the man started asking him theological questions he asked him you are, you are preaching to me about Christ I should, I should let Christ be in my life 
What do, what do you understand by this? When the Bible said this, how does that, uh, 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 what does that mean? He, he threw her questions that were so heavy she couldn't explain. But strong points. But the man was in the wrong because he didn't, he didn't want to believe. But the woman couldn't argue against the guy because the guy was too good. And he knew what he was talking about. After everything, the woman said, I don't have answers to your question anyway, but I still have Jesus. Do you, need, do you have Jesus? You need, are you still in need? That's how. He said, let's cast to the chase. All these things, yeah, it's very powerful. Which the questions he was asking her could make her lose her faith. But the faith, faith, watch this, please. Faith is not first of the mind. It's of the spirit. So when you hear a pastor say, I used to believe, but I don't believe, he was really never called. And it was never in his spirit. Because when it's in your spirit, what is, what is, in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 17, it says, he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit. This, this is an, an irreversible mixture. This is an inseparable union. We are one spirit with Christ. It can, it can be reversed in the spirit. Did you see that? He who is joined to the Lord, unto the Lord, is one spirit. He, but he, let's not read it aloud from the screen. Let's go. One more time, louder, please. He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. Jesus puts the, uh, Paul, sorry, Paul puts it this way in Romans chapter 8, verse 9. He said, if you don't have the Spirit of God, you don't belong to Christ. You don't belong to Christ. But, uh, uh, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If, if so be that the Spirit of God dwells in you, that indwells you. The same thing, dwells in you. Now, if any man has not the Spirit of Christ, he's none of his. What? And verse 6 talks about the mind that is set for the carnally, so to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And it talks about how the mind that is set on the things, on the flesh, minds the things of the flesh. Verse 5. Let's look at verse 5. Verse 5. For they that are after the flesh do mind. Say mind. Mind. When they are after the flesh, when they talk, it's always flesh, flesh, flesh. They do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. The next verse says, for to be, to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Listen, you can be spiritually minded. It's not only for, you see, some of you think spiritual, they are spiritual gurus. There's nothing like spiritual guru. You are a Christian, the, the, the seed of God is in you. You can choose to be spiritually minded. You can choose to. Wednesday, I was in Reading Church. I went to preach at the Reading Church. And I preached a message Don't live your life. That's the title of the message. Stop living your life. Live his life. Live his life. For me to live, live his life. Don't be living your life. And I show them how to live the life of Christ as a Christian. How do I live Christ? I was, I was teaching, teaching them. Now, it's important to understand that when you are filled with the Spirit of God, you, you, you can... Uh, <laughs> you know when you have money in your account? Okay, some of you have about three different accounts. Sometimes you use a card to pay uh, this one... You, okay, I know you. Or you can move money from this account into this account to do the transaction, right? Yes. There are some accounts you can't do certain transactions from because that account has got only about 300 pounds in it. But this thing you are trying to buy, this bed you are buying for you and your wife is 1,002. So you need to use this account, the card of this account. In the same way, when you are a believer, you can afford to live from your spirit. If you are not a believer, you can't. You don't have it. You are bankrupt in the spirit. Every one of the signs that show you are a Christian is that your spirit is alive unto God. The life of God indwells you and you can afford to live from your spirit now. So that the wisdom of God that fills us must be first from the spirit. It's a spiritual thing. It's not just a mental thing where you can just read and reading to know. And some people are reading, 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 and you are read. <laughs> you're reading, 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 but we can see fruits of the spirits in this your whole 
Christian research. You can see. You can see. When you talk, people are not lifted. When you speak, people are, are discouraged. They are not lifted or they feel more carnal. Certain pastor told me some time ago recently, he said, you, you, when I speak to you, you are one, of, one man of God, when I speak to you, we end up with scriptures. All my other friends, when we speak, it's like we speak our business, speak about different things. But when I speak with you, and I feel lifted. And I felt like that, that was a nice compliment because that's what I want to be in people's life. When I relate with you, there's one aspect that should never go unattended to, your spiritual life. Your spiritual life. There's something must stir you towards God. That makes me filled with the Holy Spirit. When I'm dealing with you and the, the Spirit is filled with my life, when I'm dealing with you, by the time we, it doesn't matter how long or how short, you feel a bit more God words. Some people, by the time you finish dealing with you, you are upset, you want to kill somebody. You are very, <laughs> See how important, look at the prayer topic. So when I heard about your faith, when I, I, I heard about your love for the saints, when I, and your, your hope that is laid up for you, and the, how the gospel has, is bringing forth fruit in you since the day you knew the gospel and then knew the grace of God in truth. He said, we also, we also, we do not cease praying for you that you be filled. That's so important for your Christian journey. This, this is a better prayer than praying for you for marriage. I, I'm not saying marriage is not important. It's very important. And please just so you come to church next Sunday. I've been praying for your marriage. I've been praying for your marriage. But there's a better prayer that I also make sure I don't have to leave not praying for you. That we shall be filled. You and I will be filled with the knowledge of his will. In all, in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Let me just add one more verse and then. You know, look at the verse 10. No wisdom and spiritual understanding. That ye might, oh. You see, when you are filled with the knowledge of his will, the resultant effect is that you walk worthy of the law unto all pleasing. And you become fruitful in every good work, increasing in the knowledge of God. You become fruitful in every good way. That is why it's so important that every one of us, listen, please, please, make this part of your regular prayer, that Lord, fill me with the knowledge of your will. Fill me with the knowledge of your will. Make it part of, it's like, you can make it, um, instead of saying, our Father who art in heaven, say that one, and then pray for other things. <laughs> Do you understand? Some of us, you don't finish your prayer by saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hello be thy name, thy kingdom come forever and ever. Amen. It's not bad, it's good. But get meaningful, get real. Pray that God will fill you with the knowledge of His will. And then you can add the Our Father. But pray that God will fill you. Because there are too many people who are bankrupt of the knowledge of His will. Bankrupt. And it makes you a cheap victim. You cry where you are not supposed to cry. You fret when you are supposed to be rejoicing. You suffer unnecessary stress and strain. Because you are only thinking about what is making you feel the way you are feeling now. Lift up your eyes. After Lot chose the best place of Sodom, the, the most fertile land, land uh, plains, God told Abraham, lift up your eyes. Don't look just here. Lift up your eyes and see. However, as far, far as you see, I'll give it to you for your possession. Lift up your eyes. See farther than where you are. See farther than how you feel. See farther than what you see. See far. But all these things are much more at the mercy of being filled with the knowledge of God's will. That you walk worthy of the Lord. Can you imagine? There are people who walk worthy of the Lord. One of the areas that every one of us, see, you, we, we see you as a Christian, but the people who live with you, they know you are not really serious. Sometimes, I remember, I will never forget, no one, not two, I think about three of couples, either a spouse, a spouse 
One lady. She was one of the very important person in the church. The husband, they were having an altercation and I went to mediate and the husband looked at me. He said, Pastor, the reason why when we come to church, I don't even want to walk with my wife is because she's a hypocrite. I said, well, no, 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 you can't say that. She said, very, she said, Pastor, you don't know my wife. Now, I was going to defend her, but I realized that, listen, please. So I just kept quiet, but that thing never left me. And later on, I realized I understood what he meant. Yeah, later on, I understood what, later on, ah, wow. Thank God I didn't jump to foolishly advertise my ignorance and lose my respect. Because there are things that he can't tell me. One day, Pastor Wu and I went to a certain home. They were fighting. They had to call the police. <laughs> no, it doesn't happen in Karis very often at all. Not at all. It's only once that we fighting. We went to the house. <laughs> the lady said, Pastor, this guy is a liar. Pastor, you don't know him. Pastor, you don't know him. He's a liar. And I'm wondering, but what does he like? But you know, she won't say anything. Because some of the things will implicate her too. <laughs> yeah. Because sometimes they'll be in their house and only God knows how much they are lambasting the pastor in the church. Yeah. Some of us, it's only our children who know we are lies. daughter is very surprised. Yeah. <laughs> you see church people and especially ladies they go they go like this. The back come please. They go like this quickly. They see somebody in church. in the car with you just you came are confused <laughs> because you, you just were butchering this person in the car what? and then later on they are wondering why their children don't do church because of your duplicity mm. oh, my child must do church my child must. but you have lambasted church so you so long as your child is concerned you know a lot of young people don't like hypocrisy they just want, let's be real. But the older you grow, you realize that sometimes you have to be a hypocrite a little bit. <laughs> yeah, you have to be mature. Children, uh, one day, one day, let me say this again. Uh, one day, a couple, uh, uh, a certain family in a uh, church, this is about 15 years ago or so, and a man visited their family. The man is Nigerian, and they have a Nigerian family. But you know, in the past, it ha- used to happen a lot. Nowadays, I think it's come down. They give people tribal marks. And there's a kind of tribal marks. It's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Like that, you know? So, this man, it's not his fault. That's how he was. He came to visit the family. And then they went, hey, oh, uncle. And then this young, at about eight years old or younger, less than, he came to the man. He said, hey, British, British girl, what happened to you? Did you fight with your tiger? Thank you, sir. Did you fight with a tiger? The mother was so embarrassed. This Nigerian thing came out of her. Hey, Jeddah <laughs> caught this girl and disciplined her. One day, one of our sisters in church came to church with a different hairstyle. The same child. <laughs> you remember? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a sister still here. This is about 15 years ago. Came to try, you know, sometimes women, we are tired. <laughs> My daughter told me recently, he said, Pastor, he said, Daddy, as for you, you are so fortunate that you don't have hair. <laughs> so you don't have hair, so you don't have to struggle to do, you know, women, sometimes they go through a lot. So, husband, let's appreciate them, okay? <laughs> I hope you have appreciated your wife this morning. <laughs> all right, let's, I have to finish. So, this woman has changed the hair, but it's very different from all we are used to. 
And you know, especially when you live alone, you might not have someone to tell you, change it a little bit. <laughs> and so when she came to church, as adults would do, oh wow, that's a new hairstyle. I, I like this hair. Then this child says, ah! Your hair is very ugly. <laughs> yeah. The mother was so embarrassed, caught her. Gave her some smacks. At that time, they haven't banned smacking. And I was told, I called the mother, I said, you can't be smacking a child in the church. We can't, we don't do that. See, so we knew it before they banned it. <laughs> but what I'm trying, children don't like hypocrisy. The older you grow, then you begin to accept politics and hypocrisy. Yeah, some of you, you are in church. The way you smile with people is a lot of fake. <laughs> but the truth is, that's why I preach the message during lockdown, remove the mask. Start dealing with people. Not, okay, if you don't feel funny, if you feel funny about people, don't tell them I feel funny about it. It's not responsible. But work on yourself to be nice to people, genuinely. When you like somebody, when you like the fact that it's now she's also, today we'll announce our marriages. Don't be jealous, okay? Don't, don't be jealous. Just, even if you are jealous, which can be human. Because the first jealousy expressed in the world, in the Bible, ended up in murder. Yeah. Jealous people will always end up in something atrocious. Be nice. Even when you are getting jealous, tap yourself. Say, hey, hey, hey. There's no point. There's no point. Educate yourself. That's wisdom. Tap in the wisdom of God in your spirit. Be spiritual. And walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. I believe you received something today. Hallelujah. I realize every Sunday there's a lot more to teach, but I didn't finish. So we are here by God's grace. Amen. I need us to pray. If you don't mind, shall we all rise to our feet? This, what, what, what should be our prayer topic? Oh, Lord. Fill me with the knowledge of your will. Fill me, if you can't remember unto all, uh, in all wisdom and our spiritual understanding, that can make it long. Just fill me with the knowledge of your will. Fill me with the knowledge of your will. Fill me in my situation, in my current condition, in my current relationship, in anything I find myself, Lord, in situations to come, fill me with it. I think it's a good prayer to pray. Let's be Christians and let's pray. Somebody lift up your hands, talk to God. Talk to God and be particular. Make reference to things that you are going through. Make reference to things that have happened in your life. Things that are happening in your life. And say, God, fill me with the knowledge of your will. Oh Lord, fill me with the knowledge of your will. In all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That I will not miss you. And I will not miss what you plan to do with my life at any point in time. Oh Lord, fill me. Fill me, Lord. Fill me, Lord, with the knowledge of your will. Fill me more and more. Help me to be able to live and be spiritually minded. Help me to be able to set my mind on the things of the Spirit. To set my mind on the things of the Spirit. Help me to be able to live from my Spirit and depend on your wisdom in my Spirit. Help me to tap into your wisdom in my Spirit. Help me to tap into your wisdom in my Spirit and to walk by wisdom, by the wisdom from your Spirit. So I will walk and unto all pleasing. I will walk worthy of you unto all pleasing in the name of Jesus oh Lord we pray we pray that's one thing we want that's one thing we are crying for help us we've all we are all like sheep have gone astray every now and then we do it our own way every now and then we go our own way but this morning at this moment we are praying that you fill us with the knowledge of your will unto all pleasing in spiritual uh, uh, knowledge of your will in all, all wisdom and spiritual understanding and be, be working worthy of you we pray so we can walk worthy of you and to all pleasing bringing forth fruits bringing forth fruits bearing fruits bearing fruits to your glory in the name of Jesus fill us O oh Lord fill us 
in situations faced in our families we are faced with in our families in situations we are faith, faced with in our health in situations we are faced with in our ministries in situations we are faced with in our relationships in situations we are faced with in our marriages in situations we are faced with in our career in situations we are faced with in our education in situations we are faced with with our wider family in situations we are faced with in our society and community in situations we are faced with in our finances we pray oh lord one thing we ask that you will fill us we will, we will be filled with the knowledge of your will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding thank you that we will, we will walk worthy of you unto all pleasing being fruitful in every good work. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Shall we please bow our heads? I don't want to end without giving somebody an opportunity to, to make a commitment to Jesus. You are here and you want to say, Pastor, please pray for me. I need the life, the, the life of God in me. You see, some of these things, when you hear them, they sound very grandiose, but not attainable. It's only attainable when you are in Christ and Christ is in you. And you want to say, Pastor, I, need, I want a new relationship with Jesus. I want to do this God thing for real, in spirit and in truth. I want to make my relationship with Jesus right. You are here, you know your relationship with Jesus has not been the best, but from today, you want to make it right. Maybe you want to say, Pastor, I want to start afresh in Christ. If that's your genuine desire, I'm happy. I would like to pray with you. So if it's your genuine desire, please lift up your right hand above your head so I can see it. You want to say, Pastor, please pray for me. I need Jesus. I want to start afresh in Christ. I need Christ in my life. Or maybe you are backslided. You've always been in Christ, but you're backslided. And you want to say, I want to rededicate my life to Jesus. If that's your desire, you to lift up your right hand above your head so I can see it and pray with you. God bless you as you do that. You are here. You want to say, Pastor, I need Jesus. I need to start afresh in Jesus. You want me to pray with you? Lift up your right hand. Now, if you are watching and you, are, you, you want to start afresh in Jesus, maybe you are even lying on a sick bed or you are lying in a place that is not good, but you know your relationship with Jesus has not been the best. And you want to say, Pastor, I need Jesus. I want to start afresh with you in Jesus. If that is your genuine desire, please say these words after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I know I am a sinner and I've sinned against God, but I believe that you are the Son of God. You died on the cross to save me from my sins. From today, I repent from my sins. And I ask you to forgive me. Please wash me with your blood and make me a brand new person on the inside. I make a commitment that I'll live my life in you. Be my Lord and my Savior. I'll be in church. I'll be in faith. And I'll be faithful to you by the help of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Father, I thank you for all those who have made this commitment. I pray that they will receive the dynamic energy, strength from within to live the life to the end. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you genuinely say this and you are watching, the announcer will give you an information. Please follow the announcement and follow the information and looking forward to connecting with you. God bless you. We hope you are blessed by today's message. It is the will of God that we all come to accept Jesus as our Lord and Saviour and come into the new life in Christ. If you have just said the sinner's prayer, please send us an email at amen at charis.org where we can connect with you and help you with your spiritual development. We look forward to speaking with you. Thank you for tuning in. We hope you were blessed by today's message. To everyone who has been faithful with their tithes and offering, we thank you for partnering with us in spreading the gospel. 
For those of you who wish to give, you can give via the online giving form at caris.org forward slash giving or scan the QR code. You can also give via Apple Pay, Google Pay, PayPal, direct bank transfer or text KC Give and the amount to 70085. Text giving has a limit of £20. International givers can also give via international bank transfer using the IBAN number and SwiftBIC displayed on the screen. May God bless you for giving. Why not browse through our YouTube channel for more teachings and also make sure you subscribe and click on the notification icon to be notified of any new message. You can also find more teachings by Pastor David on various audio streaming platforms such as SoundCloud, Apple Podcast, Spotify, Google Podcast and Amazon Music. We look forward to fellowshipping with you again. God bless you.